What's up everybody? I hope you are doing well. Today is my sixth video in the series of how to become a stronger writer for your English literature class. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about framing your evidence as well as your analysis within your essay. So let's get on with the video. All right, guys, so today I'm going to talk about how to introduce your evidence and your analysis. I'm not necessarily talking about what you need to write in your analysis or your evidence, but how to embed them within your essay. So let's talk about framing your sentences. You cannot just drop a quote, drop an analysis, and run. You need to frame them. You need to give them some context for the reader to understand. Don't just put a quote there, leave, and not explain it. You need to fully embed it within the context and the reason of why you are writing. So what does it say over here? Explain your quotes and frame them in proper language. Yes, you need to explain why you're using this quote. You need to explain how that quote fits into your essay, but you also need to introduce your quotes and your analysis in a proper and formal way for your English essay. All right, so here we go. Here are some examples of how you can frame your quotes. You can start with these little sentence stems. The author wrote, an example is, in the text it says, this is shown when, this proves whatever your thesis might be talking about because this demonstrates whatever your thesis might be talking about because based on the reading, then you have your quote. It is evident that whatever your thesis might be talking about because this quote is where you're going to embed your text evidence, but you need to set your text evidence up correctly. Set up a sentence starter, a frame, just like this. Before this, of course, you're talking about your thesis statement. You're talking about how you're proving it. And then, boom, you are proving it with your text evidence, but you're introducing that text evidence to your audience or to your reader. For example, you're talking about how power went to Julius Caesar's head and how he didn't listen to anybody. And then you say, in the text, it says, and then give a direct quote that shows that Julius Caesar was getting too pompous and big headed for his position. This is shown when, then you give a quote that shows what you were talking about right before, right? So you're explaining, then you're explaining that you're gonna talk about the quote, then you're gonna talk about the quote some more in your analysis, but you need to frame everything correctly. Do not just drop and run. So after you give the quote, then of course you are explaining that quote, and that is analysis part one. Then you have analysis part two, which is the most important part, because this is your own thinking about the quote and how it relates to your thesis statement but you do need to embed your analysis part two in the correct manner. So talk about framing, framing that analysis. And these are good sentence stems or frames to help you introduce your thinking in analysis part two. So let's take a look at it down there. All right, so are you guys looking at it with me? Number one, this demonstrates that, this connects to, this proves that, this illustrates, this conveys the idea that, this illuminates the prospect that. These are all really good sentence stems to help get your ball rolling on your analysis part two to start proving the thesis statement. All of these words really just mean show, right? Demonstrate, connects, proves, illustrates, conveys, illuminates. They all mean show and they all help you to prove the thesis statement given that you're proving your quote correctly. But these are really strong frames to add into your essay and I would encourage you to take a screenshot and use this for the next time you have to write an essay in your English class. So to recap, these are three tips to help you make your paragraph more powerful. Number one, don't forget to introduce your evidence. Give it a frame, give it a context, give it a formal language so that your reader knows what they are about to read. 
Number two, use transition words to make your words flow better. I already did a video about that, so I'll link that above. Transition words just help your ideas flow from one thing to the other, and it makes it more clear for your reader to understand what your ideas are and what you're trying to get them to understand. And number three, of course, is to edit your essay. I've also done a video on this, so please check that one out. But you need to edit, you need to read your essay out loud. Does it make sense to you? Does it make sense to the reader? Does your sentences flow? Does your sentences make sense? Are your sentences too long? Do you think you might need to shorten them a bit? These are all questions that you should ask yourself while you are editing your essay so that when you turn your paper in, all that hard work is not for naught. When you get your grade back, it will be a good paper. Well, guys, I hope that these sentence frames helped you. I hope that you start to embed them and to use them within your next essay when you're talking about quotes or analysis. In the meantime, I hope that you're staying sane and safe. And don't forget, peace, love, and essays. Bye.